Hey guys, before you lecture me for doing a video while I'm driving, look, both hands are on the wheel, eyes are on the road, but I have to talk to you. I've had something so um, convicting on my heart that um, I know that I have to get it out there. It's meant for somebody that's gonna watch this video to hear. Um, so let me tell you a story. About a month ago, I realized that I was kind of in a plateau in certain places in my life and in my business. And so I started doing what I have learned works for me, which is to dig in deep into the Bible, dig in deep with prayer, and dig in deep with personal development, and just flood my heart and my mind with as much truth as possible. Because usually what gets me stuck into a plateau in my relationships, in my life, in my business, is that, that, that voice in my head that says, oh, you've, you've done enough. You, you've worked so hard, you deserve a day off, you, you just need to go shopping and pick up a few things for the house, go get your nails done, and none of those things are bad, guys. They're not bad. I love those things. Um, we need leisure and self-care in our lives, but you know what I'm talking about. When you start doing less of what keeps you moving forward and more of what takes you back. So about a month ago, I kind of had this realization and I started digging in deep with prayer and scripture and personal development. And I thought, you know what? I need to set some new goals. I am goal oriented. You know, nothing drives me forward more than setting goals that help other people, that help my family, that help my children, that help that girl out there, that woman out there that's just like I was a few years ago stuck and miserable and overweight and unhappy and sick and tired of life as she knows it. And when I can set some goals that serve that greater purpose of helping someone else, I will work my ass off to do whatever it takes to make that happen. And that's what I needed back in my life was that drive, something, you know, to, to fulfill me and drive me forward. So I did. I set some big, hairy, scary, audacious goals. And I even wrote them on my bathroom mirror with these special window markers that I bought at Target by Crayola. They're awesome. I wrote, I am a New York Times bestselling author. That's pretty hairy scary since I'm not even writing anything right now except social media posts. I wrote, I'm a millionaire. That's pretty freaking big goal. I wrote, I'm invited to speak at various large scale events and conference calls and even on stage at conferences. That is pretty scary because if I actually did those things, I would be terrified. And I wrote a few other things in my mirror, and I put a quote up there by Winston Churchill that goes something like this. Success is nothing more than going from failure to failure without losing enthusiasm. So I set that out there, and I got it in front of my face. And every day as I'm doing my hair and my makeup, and I'm listening to personal development podcasts and sermons and things to flood my mind and heart with truth, and I'm looking at those things on my mirror, it fires me up for my day and I have a, a, you know, that burning passion in my belly that keeps me pressing forward. And that is called opening yourself for advancement. You know, God didn't part the Red Sea for Moses until Moses put his foot in and took that first step and set that staff down into the water. It wasn't until Moses believed enough to take that first step of faith that God came in and gave him the advancement that he had promised him. And so many times we stand on the edge of the water and we're so scared to take that first step that we never do and everything we ever wanted is right there one baby step away and we don't take it because this is why when you're standing before a phase or a season or a step in advancement in your life when God has put a vision and a passion in your heart and you start thinking man I'm, I'm gonna go for that I'm gonna do that you know what that does? That gets the attention of our enemy. 
Satan perks his ears up every time he sees one of us starting to, to think about faith, taking a faith step, taking a risk, going for something that's scary. It captivates his attention and he goes, uh-uh, no, you're not going to do that. And all of a sudden we find ourselves under attack from our own negative thoughts, from even from our spouse or our closest family members, because when we start to change and grow, it scares them. They don't want to lose us. It makes them feel insecure and they worry. Oh, if, if, if she grows and, and, and builds this success, she's not going to want me anymore. She's not going to think I'm good enough. They get scared, so they come after you too. They fill your head with all kinds of doubt and questions and skepticism. And things will happen, like, you know, just this week, so in the last few weeks, I've been working on this, you know, setting these new, goal, new goals and moving towards them, and I was actually invited to speak on a team call of a dear Beachbody coach friend of mine last night, Melissa Gallimay, and I was invited to speak on a call tonight for one of the top 10 coaches in the entire network of Beachbody, and we are pushing towards 400,000 coaches really fast. And uh, my upline sponsor, way, way, way up, Melissa McAllister, invited me, little old me, who's like a speck of dust in her downline, to speak on her call tonight. So my advancements were coming. Those affirmations I put on my mirror, I am invited to speak, have been coming at me left and right. I was even invited to do the children's sermons at my church once a month up in front of the entire congregation. I mean, they're just coming at me left and right because I put that intention out there and I said, okay, God, if this is what you want me to do, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to step into the sea and I trust you to part the waters and let me pass through. But it got Satan's attention. Let me tell you what happened yesterday. Yesterday, my hard drive on my laptop completely crashed. My PowerPoint that I needed for last night's call was on that laptop. My PowerPoint that I just created on Monday, I spent hours on Monday creating a PowerPoint for tonight's call. Two weeks ago, my computer had been acting up and I took it into the shop and he backed it up to an external hard drive. So he was pretty sure he could get everything from prior to two weeks ago. That anything I had done in the last two weeks was probably lost, including the presentation that I needed. That's attack. That's Satan going, uh-uh-uh. I know you're about to go out there and inspire somebody and help somebody to live a better life and make a difference and advance your own family and advance yourself into a new season of success and abundance and I'm not gonna let that happen I have been bombarded with self-doubt I have been an emotional basket case I have been crying on all my team calls and uh, mastermind you know meetings that I've had I have been completely filled with negativity and self-doubt. Yes, me, the positivity queen. I have been so burdened with not feeling good enough for these new things coming my way. And that's Satan. That's the attack. So I want you to guys think about your own life. You know, where are you promised by God advancement in your life? And you know it's there. It's a dream that's been on your heart forever. It's a vision that keeps rolling through your mind. You can see it. It's a picture of you living a certain life, having a certain kind of relationship, having a certain kind of financial status, being surrounded by amazing people that just get you, you know, that just get you and you, and you feel supported. You have that vision in your mind and yet somehow it seems so elusive. And I'm telling you, it's because you're not taking that tiny step of faith into the water. You're standing on the shoreline looking out going, I know it's there, but you're not taking that baby step of faith. And just know that when you do and you start to be attacked and bombarded with every reason in the world, including your own thoughts, as to why you shouldn't have that or do that, you have to go back and listen to the voice of truth. There's a Christian praise and worship song that even says that. I will listen and believe the voice of truth. And what is the voice of truth? It's not that endless self-deprecating tape that rolls through your mind all the time. It's the voice of your heavenly father who created you, who gave you talents and gifts and a purpose that he needs you and wants you to fulfill while you are here on this earth. That's the voice of truth. He says you are adored to your core. He is in love with every ounce of who you are. He lovingly made you exactly the way you are. And he placed you at this point in time in the world for a purpose, 
for such a time as this, now. And the dreams and visions that are in your heart are not selfish, that's what you're here to live out. You're here to live that out. So I wanted to leave that with you today and just, I want you guys to understand that you don't have to hesitate. You don't have to listen to the attack. That's what holds you back. You don't wanna give Satan that victory. You claim victory over that in the name of Jesus Christ who died on the cross for your sins to free you from being chained and stuck. You don't have to live that way. I see way too many women that come to me in my challenge groups just as they start to get consistent with their workouts, just as they start to master a few clean eating recipes that they and their family love, and just as they start to see results, they're attacked. Sometimes by their own family. Sometimes by their own mindset. And they quit. And they give up. And they gain the weight back that they lost. Because they didn't stick it out and listen to the voice of truth. Don't let that be you. Don't let that be you. You deserve better.